This is a Blaring Out with Eric Blair show coming to you from the 2017 Vans Warp Tour with the man, the myth, the legend, Maddie Mullins of Memphis Mayfire. How you doing, Maddie? Doing good, brother. What Christian bands did you see in concert when you were a kid? Pretty much all of them. <laughs> you know, that's what I was raised on. So, I mean, you know, uh, Jars of Clay, Mercy Me, DC Talk, Audio Adrenaline, um, all, all of them. I mean, that's my, my family is more music oriented than sports oriented. So, I mean, we we're going to concerts every weekend and um, had a lot of influences in that realm. Did you have uh, any physical outlet? at sports at all or working out a little bit of indoor soccer um but i've i don't think i've ever worked out a day in my life i mean look at that you know, I what know I'm saying? you're very blessed <laughs> <laughs> not a whole lot to it you know yeah. but yeah man um not not a very like uh, sports oriented family but i do watch the seahawks how did you meet your future wife Brittany mullins and how did you know it was the right thing to get married at 18 that would scare the pants off a lot of people yeah I think the thing was is that it just didn't scare us you know what I mean like uh, we were high school sweethearts dated for four years before we got married all the way through high school and right, right when we graduated we got married and um, man there's just never been something more clear to me in my life than the fact that I was supposed to spend the rest of my life with that woman and um, we uh, both you know moved out of our parents house at the same time when we were 18 just to get an apartment together in downtown Spokane where I was from and um, it's just it's been magic ever since man like never never like a, a, a moment that I didn't absolutely love being with her it's like it's been incredible and we've been married for 11 years coming up on 12 now you come from a I guess hyper conservative Christian family would that be right in saying that um, to a certain extent you know my dad's a pastor mm -hmm. mom's actually you know very conservative as well but uh, I would say it was an average an average Christian upbringing yeah mm -hmm. yeah totally okay so did you ever have your prodigal son period absolutely man I mean the first like four years of four or five years of us touring as a band I was just really serving myself, man. Like I, I wanted just to get to the next level. I wanted to be in the biggest band in the world. Wanted to make a lot of money and have a lot of followers. I woke up one day and it was empty. Like none of it mattered. I had everything I wanted and it didn't feel like I thought it would. And um, I just really realized at that moment in my life that I had to start chasing after the heart of God and living for something more, you know? Um, so I started seeking after his heart and just watched him start to transform my life. It's a really tough season of my life, but man, it's so great looking back on that. I'm so thankful for having the tough seasons, you know? Everyone always says like, you know, life's all about, you know, sitting on the beach, sipping a margarita. I think life is all about when you're out in the middle of the ocean, the boat starts to sink and you're hanging on by one last plank of wood and you reach out and you say, God, I need you. I know I need you. And uh, that's the season that I was in. And, and these days, I wake up with much more purpose. You got everything you wanted and then found out you were empty. What did you get? What is it that you achieved where you felt like I've arrived? You know, getting out of the van, touring in a bus and getting paid, you know, $10,000 to play in a club and, you know, having a quarter of a million followers on Instagram and, uh, you know, everything that bands like are trying to get to. And I'm just like, I love to tell people like, yo, it doesn't add up. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't. It's like you wake up empty because man, the people on Instagram that love you are the same people that'll cheer on your hanging and money goes away. You know what I mean? Like yeah. none of it matters. You know, we're not going to be the biggest band in the world forever. It's more about the relationships that I develop out here. You know what I mean? Well, I'll take it back. We're, we, we've never been the biggest band in the world. We never will be, right? That's not what I meant. But I just mean like we're not always going to be cool. And it's like, you know, what really matters is just what, you know, the people that I invest in, the people that I love, the people that feel like something that I've done, whether it be music or through a relationship or whatever, has enriched their life in one way or another. Man, that's what it's all about. People. What was, but what was the turning point? What was the turning point for you? Because, it, you know, we know that in recovery, everybody's got to hit rock bottom before they can go up. Yeah, well, I was taking really bad care of my body on tour for sure, um, you know, and just uh, wasn't nurturing myself mentally, you know, at all. You know, it was just kind of like, go, 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 go all the time. And um, I had my first panic attack and I had no idea what that was or what it was like going to be like or anything. It's just it came out of nowhere and it, I felt like I was dying. I had to be rushed to the ER. And the doctor was like, hey, you need to slow down. Like, you need to just stop what you're doing. And I was like, doctor, you don't understand. Like, I can't, I don't have the option. And it got worse and worse and worse until I got to the absolute 
darkest place I've ever been. I felt like I was living in this hole, scratching and clawing my way out, never able to find a way out. So I started to do therapy and, um, you know, my sister started a, a nonprofit for therapy in Nashville uh, called the Refuge Center for Counseling and it's, uh, it's faith-based therapy and I just started to learn so much about myself. Started going to a different church in Seattle where we were living at the time um, and it's called the City Church, watching a lot of Judah sermons, uh, Judah Smith's sermons and um, the guy, the way that that guy preaches was uh, so direct to me it felt like and I hung up an Apple TV in the bus and I would watch all of his sermons online I think I've seen every sermon he's ever preached you know and um, just connecting with God in a way that I never had before you know like really starting to understand him and understand my relationship with him not just what my parents had uh, but now what is my relationship with God and so you know it definitely was the worst the lowest place I've ever been in, in my life but it did it forced me to reach out in a new way, you know? Now, was this pre-Memphis Mayfire or, or during? It's a few years ago. We've been a man for 10 years. So, this, you know, this is like four or five years ago. And, um, and yeah, it was, it was very much during the band. How did the guys in the band feel when all of a sudden you're on fire for Christ? I think it's a little scary, right? When you're just like, wait, where did this come from? You know what I mean? But it's like, they were there for me as much as they could be. Mm -hmm. They were with me in that season as much as they could be but so much of it was behind the scenes it was mental it was internal and so I think that they just started to see me blossom as a flower grow into the person that I've always needed to be and um, they're an awesome group of dudes you know even if we don't all see eye to eye on the beliefs or whatever it's totally okay they're very much behind me in what I do and um, a great group of dudes to tour with but so. the thing is a lot of times when people make that commitment People, they're under the microscope with, with the people that are around them. And I'm wondering, and a lot of times people want to see you fall. Because yeah. when they see you fall, then they can say, oh, Jesus isn't real. Mm, totally, man. And the thing is, is like humans have given Christianity a bad stigma. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like God never did. So it's like the thing is, is, you know, you've got like these Christians that, you know, act and look. I try to look and act like they're perfect, you know? And it's like, dude, that's not the case. It's like Christianity is the gospel. It's faith. It's grace. It's being like, hey, I'm not okay. I'm not perfect. I'm actually really screwed up. And God, I need you. I need you to walk through this life with me. So it's like for me, admitting my faith, talking about my faith or anything is more so me being like, hey, I'm broken. You know, hey, I'm not okay. I need something else. I need Jesus, you know? And, um, so yeah, if I mean, if people are waiting for me to screw up, I guarantee you, it'll happen. <laughs> you know, I'm a very imperfect person. Um, but if you want to know what Jesus is really all about, what grace is really all about, what the gospel really means, it's just that we couldn't do it on our own, and Jesus did. Considering your song, Prove Me Right, what advice would you give to kids that want to get in the entertainment business? Don't trust anyone. I'm kidding. Um, no, it's like, be careful. You know, when you sign the dotted line on a record deal, like you're signing away years of your life. Be careful what that contract says. When you hire people that work for you, hire people that represent you in the right light. Your manager, your tour manager, your merch guy, they're all dealing with more people on a daily basis than you ever will. They have to represent you in the right way, you know? Hire slowly, fire quickly, you know, like if, you know, someone's coming out working for the camp or whatever, it's not, it does, it's not the right fit, you know, like make sure that everything is always in good standing within your camp, that it's a healthy thing, you know, uh, it's very important. What has the fan re reaction been like to your new song, Say It All, off your unstoppable solo album? Oh, wow. I was expecting you to say Virus uh, from the Memphis record. Um, man, it's been good. Yeah, I mean, that record is, is um, it's not for everybody, right? You know, like pop music, Christian pop music or whatever, it's not for everybody. But for us, like we really, for me, um, that genre of music has been so impactful in my life. It's been uplifting and it's been something that I go to when I'm weak and I'm just excited to have a record out that can do that for certain people that also enjoy that kind of music. Um, so yeah, it's been awesome, man. Between, uh, you know, touring with Memphis Mayfire, having this incredible solo career and having your and being with your amazing wife, where do you find the space to have quiet time with God? Uh, I'd have a little more if I didn't own a hair product company on top of all that, yeah, right? Like it's like a lot, yeah. a lot of stuff. But no, you know, it's important. Like my mornings or my evenings, you know, when there is time to retreat, it is so important just to get away and um, just to be genuine, you know? And I mean, like so many people think that like, you know, prayer or time in the word or whatever is just like oh, or whatever you know it's like dude I'm talking to God I'm like Lord I need help today's tough I don't feel like doing this I don't want to get on that stage you know like I don't want to talk to all these people today like I can't do it I don't have enough you know asking for strength 
and uh, asking for patience. That's what it is, you know? Just me one-on-one, -on -one, just being homies with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> cool. How, how have you seen your Christianity touch the lives of the rock stars that you call friend? That's a that's an awesome question, man. You know, I would just hope that if anybody, any of my friends or any of my acquaintances um, spend time around me that they're curious about, about my faith, you know, and I get to talk to them about it. Um, and that's happened a handful of times, absolutely. You know, the guys in my band or the guys in other bands and, um, you know, I never try to be preachy with anybody. Like, I don't, I just don't care to, you know what I mean? Like, this is my faith and if you want to know more about it, I'm happy to share it with you. Um, but I don't ever want to be over the top or try to make people feel like I want them to do what I do. It's just like, that, that's not at all the goal. Um, but what I have is special, and if you want to know more about it, I'll talk with you. That's really what it's been like. I don't know how you do it, though. I don't know how you're able to be around all these people that are just, like, really living the hardcore lifestyle that is just, like, total end times lifestyle and, and, and still walk to walk, talk to talk, and not have them, like, constantly be judging you all the time. Oh, they are. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay, though. You know what I mean? Like, if anything, you just, like, when you find peace, when you find truth and hope, if the people around you don't have it, it's not, doesn't make you angry. It makes you sad. You know, like you just, I just want so badly for people to have a foundation in their life um, that gives them hope, that gives them peace. You know, something always to come back to. Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Oh, it's because God has me here and he's using me here. You know what I mean? So um, everyone's like, how do you keep your faith on the road? And I'm like, dude, my faith keeps me. You know, like that's really what's going on out here. How do you stay humble in the face of all the fame and adulation? Man, it's easy to believe all that stuff. You know, you saved my life. You're the reason I stopped cutting. You're the reason I don't have depression. Like, you're the reason I'm alive. And it's like, as soon as you start to hold that weight, you realize that human beings weren't meant to hold that weight. You know, none of us were. We were not wired to be worshipped, you know? You start to realize that when you get worshipped and you're like, oh, this doesn't feel right. This is not right. You know, I thought I wanted it. I don't. So, you know, I just tell kids, I'm excited to be a part of their story. You know, it's a blessing for our songs to be a part of their life. But I didn't save anybody, you know? Not me. Your favorite Michael W. Smith song? <laughs> um, friends are friends forever, right? Yeah, that's a great one, man. Friends are friends forever. If the Lord's the Lord of them. Yeah, dude, no doubt. That's hilarious. That is such a good question. You Rich Mullins, have you seen that movie? I didn't know there's a movie about it. Oh, dude, it's on Netflix. you got to see it. It will it. change your life. Is it like a documentary? No, it's like an actual movie about his life. It's like almost three hours long, and the wow. guy who plays Rich Mullins is awesome, dude. It will be life-changing for you, man, because you will see how somebody else lived that life, That's too. That's very cool. Very yeah, cool. I'll definitely like check it. it out, man. All right, man. God, God bless, bless you, brother. Yeah, thank good you talking here. to you. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show at the 2017 Vans Warped Tour with Maddie Mullins. Signing off. The Blaring Out Show.